I'm only slightly worried about the contents inside of this box and their structural integrity. First, because it looks like the box came undone and they had to re-tape it or whoever boxed this up doesn't know how to use the box. There's all sorts of holes and tears. Basically the bottom tape is non-existent on this thing. But what really concerns me is the fact that this is an acrylic drum set inside of here. And not just any acrylic drum set, but the cheapest acrylic drum set. At least that I know of. And this kit was provided to me by Donner for me to open up and review. And this kit retails for about $1,200. But the good news is if you head down to the description, you can find a link where you can get this kit for a discount. And just for comparison, a pearl crystal bead in the same configuration is about $2,000. A DW is around $2,200. And I couldn't find a five piece Vistalite, but a three piece was around $2,900. Also, this kit comes with everything. So stands, hardware, pedals, throne, drumsticks probably, and even cymbals. So place your bets, is anything wrong with this very fragile acrylic drum set? If the shells of this kit are 100% intact, you have to subscribe. So far, so good. We have the drum heads. Uh, that might have been from me. Why did I do that? Uh, yeah. The kit has a virgin bass drum, so we actually get tom mounts to mount them off of a cymbal stand. Ooh, all right. One of the tom mounts, so this is a rim mounted system. I've opened up a handful of other Donner kits in the past, and this bass drum pedal is really beefed up compared to the other ones. We got the snare stand. It's double braced, but it still does have the like, kind of hokey uh, clamping system on it. We have what appears to be a real throne. We have a very plush cushion with a velvety top and it almost sounds like bubble wrap or like styrofoam or something. So that's kind of interesting. So you know me and my thrones, this is a major improvement from like any other Donner throne that I've ever received. Yep, wouldn't be complete without a random bag of tension rods. Another bag of random goodies. These look like the bass drum claws. These are die cast claws and not just stamped metal. I think this is the snare drum. There she blows. We have two blugs. This hardware looks decent. We have an improved throw off compared to the previous Donner kits, as well as an improved butt plate. The badge appears just to be a little piece of stamped metal that's uh, taped on. So far, so good. They've really stepped up the quality of the hardware on these drums. And also there's no crack in the shell. So let's check on the others. Ooh, dang. <laughs> this looks like just like a, a bass drum hoop made out of Jolly Ranchers. This, <laughs> this is insane. Oh yeah, the symbols. So in the picture, they're like silver symbols and they definitely are silver. Holy crap, look at those. I'm gonna guess these are made of steel or stainless steel or something. They are very light. Uh, I think there's a magnet yeah, right here. All right, so a magnet doesn't really stick to it, but it kind of does. So most likely this is some sort of stainless steel. So this looks like the 14 inch hi-hat or at least one of them. The other one, these are very trashy. We got a 16 inch crash and a 20 inch ride the 12 inch drum mm. i got a major whiff of acrylic cement when i opened that bag and i was looking for the seam to see how they glued it but there is no seam another thing i noticed is the bearing edges are cut pretty rough they're actually kind of uneven one edge of the shell it's very sharp while on the opposite side there's like a flat spot Sure. The edges could be cut a little bit better, but at the same time, if you've ever played a vintage Vistalite, you know that those edges are god awful and they still sound fine. So these aren't the cleanest edges, but I'm still confident they'll sound okay. I was kind of confused because there's only one tom mount, but the, uh, the 10 inch comes pre-installed. The floor tom. So once again, the edges aren't exactly the cleanest, but they are acceptable, I would say. And I'm also just realizing that this is just like a straight 45 cut and that's it. There's no cut on the outside of the shell. So very sharp edges as far as drums go. And hopefully these drums have a lot of tone considering that these shells are very dead. 
So no cracks. It did look like something was up right here, but that's just a smudge. The edges are the same as the others. We do have fold out spurs and the tube lugs are the same size as the other drums. The only difference is they stand up a bit taller to accommodate the hoop. But other than that, nothing too different than the other drums. So I got a mess to clean up and let's see how this thing sounds. But wait, the hardware. Where's all that? That's a good question. I was so focused on the drums, I forgot about the hardware. So I messaged them, told them I was missing this stuff, and they sent me this box. This doesn't look very promising. We got a boom stand. And another boom stand. Okay, this timeline is all sorts of screwed up at this point. The kit was delivered to me on July 11th, I noticed it was missing all the stuff on August 6th, which was a few days after I opened it. After talking to them, they said they would send out all of the missing stuff, and that box that I just opened was delivered on September 14th, and I opened it on the 18th. And the same day, I let them know that I was still missing some of the stuff. They said it shipped in two separate boxes and also that they're remaking some of the hardware, so it'll probably be a bit before it arrives. Today is October 25th and this box just showed up. Million dollar question, is this the rest of the hardware and also is it any different than the other hardware because they were remaking it? Or were they just remaking it? Floor Tom legs. The hi-hat stand. Whoa, look at this thing. We can finally put the kit together. The bad news is this part of the studio is kind of turned into a disaster and mixed in with all this junk is uh, this kit. We got the bass drum though. We have the hoops. All of the claws and tension rods are accounted for. We got the heads. The rezzo has a gash in it, but I'm not too worried about that really. Same with the batter, but it should be all right. Everything on the 10 inch is pre-installed and for the 12 inch we do need to put the head on as well as the mount. The way this mount works is you have these little knobs right here. Put the tension rod through the hoop, screw into the knob, go through the mount and screw into the lug. Then just do that four more times. I think I put the stands in here. I was actually using the other one for a different kit. We also need to add the legs and heads to the floor tom. Rezo head is good. Batter head, not so much. Let me just borrow you. I've waited three months to install these floor tom legs. Definitely need the throne. And the hi-hat stand. This is a three-legged stand with a very wide base. But the interesting part, I think, is this, uh, this little tilter thing. If I twist it, the bottom symbol changes angles. So this thing replaces the screws that you see on most other hi-hat stands. So for me, the real test of this kit is will I keep it? I have way too many kits, so I have to be smart about what I keep and what I sell. Also, check this out. The kit comes with two extra tension rods and a swivel nut, but two lugs don't use swivel nuts.
it would be nice if they offered this as just a shell pack. The hardware isn't bad by any means. The symbols, uh, that's a different story. But the shells are cool, the edges could be better, and the whole waiting three months for the hardware was kind of annoying. And if it means anything, I'm gonna ditch the hardware and symbols and keep the kit. Or am I?